Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome back to my basement when I wasn't expecting on it. Okay, so it is almost midnight and we are here for Bridgerton season three, episode eight. I was planning on watching this a couple days down the road because I've got things to do, but um, I need to know how this happened. I need to know how it ends. I need to just know how this ends now. Okay, so we had the wedding. It was visually lovely but it was tense and awkward and just not that oh, because of the cloud of the lack of conversation and understanding between Colin and Penelope. This is why contemporary romance novels and historical no romance novels especially were not my most favorite is because usually what was the conflict between the couple was the misunderstanding. There is a conversation that needs to be had. And if they just sat down and talked to each other for five minutes, we'd clear the air and it'd be fine. <laughs> and, and we're not doing that. We're not doing that here. So it's the last episode. We know it's going to end happily ever after. So somehow, some way this episode, I'm going to finally get that moment. I think that's why I'm agreeing to stay up late <laughs> to get it done. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna stop it right there. And we are going to get under the big comfy cozy blanket. Um, we're going to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Also, you're gonna remember full episode watch along is available on Patreon where you can watch all of my Tourette ticks going at once. And then we can also share our Prosecco, our Rose Prosecco. I don't think I'm gonna finish the bottle tonight. We shall see, we shall see. I hope you have your favorite beverage as well. Okay, let's do the thing. Colin alone with his principles. Good morning. How did you sleep? <laughs> Fitfully. Have the conversation! I'll give you and your mother some privacy. Oh, you do not have to leave. I wish to. <sighs> you have a visitor in the drawing room. Is it Cressida? Good morning, Mama. <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm simply paying a visit to the esteemed Lady Whistledown. Thinking back on everything it makes perfect sense. No one would ever suspect you, as you are so very forgettable. You are going to pay me double the Queen's reward so that I might set up my life abroad. What? Or I will tell everyone of your true identity. Well, Cressida had a chance to have a little bit of a redemption. However, Miss Cowper, Lady Featherington, Penelope and I were just discussing whether or not I'm to be believed. Let us find out. I think of how all those she views as enemies end up humiliated in print. And then ask yourself, how it took you this long to realize she is the true Lady Whistledown. Do enjoy your morning, ladies. Wow, Cressida, you went from mm, to super bitch in a nanosecond. Good way to keep stoic there, Pen. Good way to keep stoic. What a fool I have been. Mama. All the terrible things you've written about your sisters. <laughs> I have fought with every tool at my disposal to claw us out of ruin time and time again, and yet, under my own roof, my own blood has been sowing the seeds of our ruin all along. How could you, Penelope? Please, Penelope, stand up for yourself! Does your husband know? Oh, for a gentleman such as Mr. Bridgerton to know that your actions have led to blackmail. You must tell Colin. Well, I would forbid it. Can't anymore. She's a married woman. Her Majesty has been quite forthcoming with accusations of late. I was wondering how we would come around to that. And what will you do once you have uncovered her? Mm -hmm. I will have won, of course. And then? Will you command her to stop writing? What are you trying to say? You will have no f adversary. I assumed she was someone with power in the town. But in her latest editions, it has become evident that there is a vulnerability there, a certain grasping to find herself. 
Do you in fact know who Whistledown is? Has Lady Danbury known for a while? Is that why you are trying to protect the Bridgertons? Perhaps she is merely trying to stay in the game as a vulnerable player. A feeling perhaps you can relate to. Oh. We're going deep. Deep, Agatha. You could have had me in checkmate. But then the game would be over early. And what fun is there in that? <laughs> you are yesterday's news. At our belly's growth, so too will the tons appreciation of our efforts. Have you ever seen a lady with child at a ball? Yeah, ever? for example, I think they would be as far along as Kate, and yet they don't seem to be any more pregnant. I, for one, do not wish to go out on a whimper, as Philippa and I are going to host a ball. Where are you now? Centred on the colour purple. Where are they now? Crystal and gold and hundreds of flowers. And we can have bug. Should we discuss a budget? <laughs> it should be very, very large. <laughs> <laughs> The best thing that we can do right now is be out in the world so that the town does not start to think that we have something to hide. Now go ahead, eat. Hmm? Yeah, your ice cream is melting. That's really difficult to make in that time period. Appreciate that work. Out like any other family, having ice cream and planning <laughs> a wedding. John and I are going to apply for a special license so that we can have a simple, small ceremony at home, after which we shall retreat to John's family. Special licenses. And I assume your Oxfordshire estate cannot be more than a day's ride away. Is it across the country? We should like to take residence at John's primary estate. In Scotland? <laughs> uh, where is that exactly? North! It's close to the border. Highlands! No, the Highlands. The Highlands. <sighs> Bet she wishes she had some, like, amaretto over that ice cream right now. A oh god, Colin, still alone with his principles. How are you? Try not to think about yesterday. Your wedding day. I must try not to think about my wedding day. I was not expecting to see you until later this afternoon. She knows, Colin, you don't have to hide your ire. Uh, certainly we should not be having this discussion in front of Miss Bridgerton. She knows everything as well. Wonderful. <laughs> so glad to see the whole of Mayfair seem to know before your own mother. Because Cressida had discovered my secret. She demands £10,000 to keep it. If she knows, we must prevent her from revealing it. Oh, I'm not asking for your help. I merely wanted to be honest with it you. It is not up to you what we do. Because <laughs> I'm the man of the house now. And I will not stand for anyone blackmailing my wife. Well, that is certainly a relief to hear. No, no, that is kind, Colin, but I can pay her. <laughs> you have made that higher sum. Slightly more, if we're being honest. <laughs> All this time. <laughs> it's in the floorboards under her bed. You will pay her, Mr. Uh, Bridgerton. No, he cannot. No one is paying her. What do you Please, will you just let me? I will not cower to Miss Cowper. I will call upon her tomorrow. Bring her to see this cause of action is ruinous for everyone involved. It is the only way forward. Penelope! <laughs> Oh, there's still okay. We've re we've re round the evening. <laughs> These three. Okay. <laughs> Hoo -hoo. <laughs> Back to the Mr. Bridgerton. <laughs> oh, okay, Colin. Mm -hmm. I take it your mother does not know about your blackmailing my wife? I no longer trust anyone but myself. You must feel terribly lonely. I have known what it's like to be truly alone. Do you, has he? I'm off on my travels. The travels. Traveling the continent, seeing the great sights of the world, as only a man can do. Mm -hmm. It felt as if everyone was busy with their lives without a need for me in them. It seems you've come for me to pay you sympathy. I have come for your mercy. Penelope is no villain. 
Do you believe that? Does he believe that? You do not sound as if you hate Whistledown. You sound as if you are jealous of her. No, I'm not. There is Whistledown, and then there is Penelope, who has experienced a kind of loneliness surely neither of us can fathom. It is not excuse what she has done, but perhaps it is understandable that at times her column has reflected the cruelty around her, a cruelty I imagine you have felt too. If even Penelope can find grace for you, do you not see that the Ton too will forgive you? And surely your father will welcome you back to London when all this passes. Colin? Your family's love is enduring. Not her family. Colin, you need to come up with another plan. You have not met her father. That is the difference between you and me. You take for granted that you will always have your family's support. Mm hmm You have until the Dankworth Finch Ball to pay me. Oh, that ball's coming out quickly. In fact, reflecting upon the lack of support I shall have 15,000 pounds. Perhaps I am not asking for enough from you. Just a little extra funds to throw the ball of the season. Because you both married untitled misters, while Penelope married a very wealthy Bridgerton, who is sure to take care of you in your old age. What need could you have to hold on to your money now? <laughs> have no fear, ladies. Of all the house stuff in London, I must be the most experienced doing more than... Cressida has her reasonable moments. Let us hope today is one. Did you truly like her? I genuinely enjoyed her at the start. At the start, mm-hmm. So, then she got backed into the corner and her fangs came out. Tell me what you were reading. Colin's manuscript. <laughs> I'm afraid I have failed. She wants double. Oh! She's lost her mind. Why do you not have that son? There is more. She requires you use your column to restore her reputation. I will have to ask Benedict to sign off on such a large expenditure. You would tell your brother about Penelope's identity? No. I will have to invent some kind of a lie. We will keep her identity shielded. Well, maybe Colin has realized now why she's written it, but... It is not a happy outcome. I suppose I should not have expected any more from Cressida. Get back to the story. The one time we all do not care about a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't awaken your palate first, Violet. <laughs> Only the Scottish could dream up such a drink. It is needed to fight the bitter cold up there. Oh, do not frighten me more than I already am. <laughs> You will have my support in Francesca's absence. And also my brother's, if you wish it. Uh, we do not have to discuss that. But perhaps we should. And uh, if you were to give your blessing. Oh, it is certainly not my place to give or withhold a blessing on the matter. You are both adults. You may do as you wish. Especially since I banged your daddy, you can bring my brother. <laughs> After all, it is not as though I asked your permission. Because <laughs> I was a young girl. <laughs> you know. Oh, we're having this talk now. Yes. I do now. I know my father was a good man. And that you have been a very good friend. And that is all I need to know. <gasps> Is that the hat? It's the hat! <laughs> <laughs> you imagine the three of us at a ball. How would we explain ourselves to, say, the Dowager Lady Cheltenham? Um. Pumpkin, this is not a forever. This is a for this moment only. But wait, that is too much. That is too much. I thought, oh my 
maybe I'll just finish off the bottle. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. And love for a good party. Especially a party of three. Tilly goes, for now. For now. that nightgown have any more stitching and fabric? I only need a blanket for the setting. <sighs> They're driving me insane. I'm going to have tea with my mother before your sister's wedding. Oh, they're getting married that day. Come on, Colin, dude up. Just <clears throat> he kept all of her letters. And how did she know where to find him? Like exactly as he traveled from town to town. Mom. Oh, it's Penelope here. No, oh, no, it's the solicitor. Lady Featherington. Walter, Walter Dundas Esquire, I do remember. I pray you have sufficient evidence for all the accusations you seem poised to make. Yeah, he seems to be a little smiley. Ah, the money you inherited from your Aunt Petunia. Mm hmm. Who's to say she was not a great saver? Her creditors. Oh. Oh. And I believe the Crown will agree that the Featherington title should be transferred to a more scrupulous family. Good day. <gasps> oh. Is your money the money Cousin Jack took from the ton? It's not as if any of them needed that money the way we did. You stole from them. Uh, you humiliated them. Mm -hmm. You stole their dignity. What you and I have done is not different. What you have done is a crime. Hmm. I did what I had to do to protect this family. Who were you protecting with your collar? Myself. Oh, from whom? I see. How was I to raise daughters when all my life I was taught that all power comes from a man? Hmm. What you have done, you have done entirely on your own. It is a great regret of mine that I've overlooked you for so long. Because you could have helped me scheme better to protect this family. We have done the best we can with the opportunities that society has afforded us. Perhaps there were other ways, but at the time, I, I could not see them. Which is a phrase Penelope also said many times. Perhaps we are more alike than I care to admit. If we survive this round, we must do better. And is the money still under the floorboards in Penn's room? You're upset about me leaving? No, of course not. I, I only, well, I, I did not expect you to settle quite so far away. Anthony and Kate are headed for India. <laughs> the silence and beauty of Scotland will allow me to know myself better. And you could not have found silence and beauty on Oxfordshire? <laughs> I would have been too tempted to come home regularly. But you will come back? Of course. <laughs> sure, she says. You know, when I first met your father, I can barely speak my own name. I was so taken by him. I... But you have shown me that there is another way, that there is beauty in the slow approach. I think they're getting married within months of knowing each other. Ah, there's no slow about that. I think you'll do very well in Scotland. Two weeks to travel. Two weeks to travel in this time period where now it will take you a day. Wow. Wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward. And none of his family are there. That's kind of sad. May you now live together in holy matrimony until your dying breath. Oh, they haven't kissed. They haven't been like Penelope. Penelope. <laughs>
That's it. That was it. Okay. 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 So does Lord Anderson seem rather taken by my <laughs> He looks like a fine fellow. He was very lucky that Anthony has already left town. Wait, Anthony left town before his sister got married? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> Excuse me. I feel I should greet Mrs. Mondrich. <laughs> Why did he leave town for his sister's wedding? <laughs> it was like in two days. They couldn't wait two days. And sincere in wondering. If you would be so kind as to promenade, save a dance for me at the next ball, <laughs> I shall offer a few humble words to your family, especially your mother. See your openness reflected in Benedict, your charm in Colin, your wisdom in Eloise. In this moment, when I feel so much gratitude for my new wife, I feel it in equal measure for the remarkable woman who raised her. That was some really good ass kissing there, sir. Good job. Good job. If you're concerned about Miss Cowper's funds, I plan to speak with Benedict tonight. Oh, no, no, pumpkin. I cannot ask you to lie to your brother on my behalf. Your family, too warm and wonderful to deceive or cheat in any way. Then how am I meant to help you? By loving me. You've given me so much already. Support her, Colin. Just support. Don't fix. Support. Support. Just being you is enough. I do not need you to save me. I just need you to stand by me. I want very much to do those things. Well, what is the restraint? The testosterone that fills our society. And as long as you live with this secret, there will always be something between us. I know. Perhaps that is the key. What are you saying? They're gonna go see the queen. They're gonna go see the queen. Or is she gonna go right? A letter for you, your majesty. Or is she gonna write the queen specifically? Oh, I know what it says. What does it say? Colin. <gasps> Did, did Violet get a letter too? I have received a letter from your wife. <laughs> You'd better sit. <laughs> Those all her poundages? Is she gonna pay the $5,000 reward for herself? <laughs> or is she giving that to her mother? Did, 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 uh, who's he, what's Mrs. Featherington tell Barley the truth? It is no wonder she's turned out the way she has. The house is far too warm. You're right, sister. It is my wife's doing. Wow, it's her, her, that ain't. <laughs> and this is when she breaks up with Benedict. Hmm. Is uh, Paul meeting us? I believe he is with someone else tonight. Should we invite someone else to join us then? <laughs> oh. Who? I guess in for a penny and for a pound. As much as I've enjoyed the three of us together, mm -hmm. I was hoping it could just be the two of us tonight. One last time I'm sensing. My relationship with Paul is friendly and I am finding that I am beginning to care for you, Benedict. Oh, opposite, opposite. I'm beginning to wonder what if we did allow things to grow more serious between us. Tilly, you are extraordinary. But? But. There's a but. I'm not certain that serious is what I want. Because we know this isn't your heroine, but still because why? What has happened ever since I met you? It has made me realize how good it feels to be free. Hmm. 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 You've opened my world. Sophie. He's going to meet Sophie then, right? And then what? But I'm not ready to close it again just now. 
It's not you, Tilly. It's me. I did. Till I saw what it felt like to share you. I support your wishes. But I must say, even merriment can grow tiring. It felt good for once to want to commit to someone. Thank you for reminding me that is possible. You may go now. Or I'll go. I'll go now. Fancy finding you here. <laughs> that was quick. I've spent nearly all of my life in either Mayfair or at Albury Hall. If I'm going to attempt to make change in the world, certainly I shall need to see some of it first. Meet people who are not my family or debutantes on the marriage mart. True. True. The more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. It feels right now that the next thing I might learn may change me entirely. Well, that's how they're going to explain this. Okay. Okay. You look lovely. My efforts will be wasted, knowing the disappointment that awaits behind those doors. Uncertain Varley has done her utmost. <gasps> oh, is that what the money went towards? Is that what the money went towards? Her sister's ball? Whose house is this? In a day. Mm -hmm. She got the ostrich feathers and the purple orchids. Did we get them? We got bugs. <laughs> she got bugs. Uh, you cut them all like a child. Wow, Penelope, that is the gown. That is the gown. What is the meaning of this? Well, it must have been you. Who paid for all of this? Uh, Mama told me she wished for you to have the greatest ball Mayfair has ever seen. Where are they? <laughs> Do we know? Is this a home or just a conservatory they rented? The printing. This time, if those were the invitations they had actually printed during this time period. Oh, that was some skill, the printer there. Uh. Your Majesty. Because I think Penelope invited her. We do not have a perch for you because we did not think you would accept our invitation. <laughs> it is not your invitation that brings me here. Oh, is Penelope doing this publicly? I received a letter from Lady Whistledown. She calls upon my mercy, asking to address you all herself, <gasps> to plead her case publicly before I pass my judgment. Oh, we're doing this publicly. So I turn the floor over now to the scribe herself. We're doing this now at your sister's ball? Yes! Not him. <laughs> Her. Well, you invited this pen? We're doing this now. We're doing this now. We're doing this now. Hello, all, or sh should I say, dearest gentle readers. In the beginning, I never thought anyone would take my writing seriously. Why should they? Violet doesn't look very surprised. I wrote about all of you because I was captivated by you, living your lives so out in the open. And in writing about all of you, I suddenly felt as if I had a life, I had power. And for anyone in this room who has ever had a taste of that, they should know it can be intoxicating. Gossip is information, especially for those of us who are told so little. But I can no longer conceal the biggest piece of information I have. Which is? My identity. Okay, okay. That is why I am so very grateful to our queen for forcing me out of the shadows with her most cunning scheme. Ooh. That's nice. Lay on some flattery. If she affords me the chance to continue, I mean to aim my quill more responsibly. That is my repentance and my plea. And yes, I do notice the gloves and I adore them. She seems humbled, but we will be watching that she remains so. <laughs> but nobody's going to gossip in front of Penelope anymore. What is life? 
without a little gossip. <laughs> now, Bonnie, the bugs. Please let them be butterflies. Please let them be butterflies. Yes, okay. Although they shouldn't be releasing butterflies. But at least they're butterflies. Mm. Is this Penelope coming out of her cocoon? <laughs> I didn't know there were going to be butterflies. Like I said, bugs. You are a genius. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Drink up, Varley. You've earned it. She has earned it. And we're back to dancing after that bombshell. Her Majesty was close when she assumed Whistledown was a Bridgerton protecting their own, but I know the family well enough to know it was not one of them. You knew it was me. You are not the only Lady of the Tarn who can keep a secret. Could not have done that without your support. And the Queen's. And with her acceptance. We can now tell that solicitor your money came from my writing. You'll have no recourse. <laughs> Took him long enough. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for your letter. I do not believe I've seen my mother so quickly shocked. Oh. And also, so quickly impressed. But I would not object to an annulment if you requested one. Ever since I found out you are Whistledown, I have done everything I can to try to separate you from her. But the other day, I went back and read all of the letters you have sent me, and I realized you have always had one voice. There is no separating you from Whistledown. I think, in truth, I, I have been envious of you. A little. Just a bit. And now I simply cannot believe that a woman with such bravery loves me. If my only purpose in life is to love a woman as great as you, then I will be a very fulfilled man indeed. I love you. It's about time you realize that. <laughs> I know I'm jaded. I know I'm jaded. I know. I know. Will you please do me the honor of joining me on the dance floor, Mrs. Bridgerton? I wonder if those butterflies are really there. They just CGI-ing them in the scene. Oh, Francesca's still around. They didn't bug out of town right away. I'm positively elated because I've come up with a rather brilliant idea or a request. I'm going to come visit you in Scotland. Let me accompany you to Scotland. I simply wish to live for a little while outside our tiny bubble. As long as you stay in your wing of the castle. <laughs> You will be living in a proper castle. <laughs> we? Oh. <laughs> Eloise has asked to accompany us. That is wonderful news. <laughs> and thankfully, my cousin has finally arrived to complete our travel party. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Michaela Sterling. Michaela. Every sort of detail John has spoken about me is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is far worse. Michaela. And you must be? <gasps> I am, um, well, I'm uh, Francesca Bridgerton, Kilmartin. Kilmartin is mm. my name now. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. What? What? I find myself suddenly at a loss for words. What? My restraint comes from a place of joy. I'm still confused. <laughs> All those who feel they have been wronged by this humble writer, my sincere apologies. Oh, Cressida. <gasps> Tilly's leaving town. Oh no, I saw Louise. I thought Tilly was leaving town. I will miss you. <laughs> Only until next year. Do you think Mama would ever let me miss her masquerade ball? I will be there, hiding out behind a mask, avoiding eligible ladies like the plague. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm.
And so it is with the heaviest heart that I write this final, unbelievably short sentence as Lady Whistledown. Goodbye. Please give me that for more. Yeah. <laughs> I still cannot fully believe you had a boy. Mm -hmm. The heir, no less. Yep. Of course we knew that. You knew Lord Featherington is quite handsome. <laughs> Guess that from his father. <laughs> I cannot have written my book without the help of Philomena's auntie Penelope. It is better than I expected. Wow, that is a huge book. It is here! And with the retirement of my literary persona, I should like to formally introduce myself. Previous wallflower, nobody unique, and yet I have my moments. And, and hopefully, hopefully, dear reader, you will stay on to enjoy them with me as we begin this next part of our journey. Yours truly, Penelope Bridgerton. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Well, gentle viewers, we got there. We got there. We got there. Now, how do we feel? How do we feel? How do we feel? So the conversation, Penelope's motivation, why she became Lily Whistledown, what she'd hoped to accomplish, what she did. We got the information as a viewer but the people she needed to have that conversation with, Colin, Eloise, she never really had it with them. She had that conversation around them when they were in the room, but she never actually had it with them. Right? Right, right? Right, I don't know. I, I would have liked to have seen her had that conversation with them. Her having it publicly with the ton. <laughs> How is she gonna write gossip? People know she's the gossip columnist. But I guess in the 20s there were the gossip columnist was like little Mary Sunshine and whatnot. Truman Capote, I guess, is a gossip columnist. So people knew who he was. He was invited to the parties. He wrote about them. So I guess it could be done but maybe not the same way as before. Because why would you air your dirty laundry in front of Penelope, knowing Penelope's now Penelope? Mondriches, why they were there? To fill in space. Truthfully, that's why I think they were there, to fill in space. They really didn't add, like you can pull all their scenes. Trajectory of the story would not change at all. Benedict, we know he's next. Gonna meet his heroine at his mother's ma at the masquerade ball. Him saying to Tilly, I want you to be free. So what about Sophie? Is Sophie better be really special? Because Tilly was no slouch. She had she had Benedict written all over her. She had a means of wealth, she had a title, she had her independence, she had adventure, she was smart, she was sexy. Sophie better be unbelievable for Benedict to change his mind. That's a hefty goal to set storytellers. And if I'm correct from what I heard before, Michaela Kilmartin was supposed to be Michael, right? That's supposed to be Francesca's book. Is Michael Sterling Kilmartin? That's in the future, I'm not gonna think about it. <laughs> okay, okay. I did like the little realization between Penelope and her mother, or Penelope realizing her and her mother were acting with the same motivation. While Lady Featherington was trying to protect the family, Penelope was trying to protect herself, but they used the same methods. That was a nice little parallel. And then her coming in and saying, my, fam my money writing saved was this family's fortune. 
Nice touch. And her giving her money so the sisters can have a nice ball. That was above and beyond. Above and beyond. Kind of wonder what happened to Lord Debling. Did he find a wife that season? And why was Cressida just not even on his radar at all? In any capacity so that when he turned down Penelope... Cressida was like, nah, not even close. Having that month break, for those of you who waited and watched all of these right in a row, did that change? This, I wonder, hmm, hmm. I'm wondering if it would have, if this, the whole season would have hit differently if we could watch them all in a row without a month break between the two. Because it seemed like a lot of the second half was we could take big chunks out and squash it together and could have told the story a little bit faster. So Cressida, let's talk about Cressida. I liked where they were kind of going with her at the, the first seven episodes, at least the first six episodes. She was there at the beginning of season one. She was willing to play the game. I'm here on the marriage mart. I'm supposed to get married. I'm going to do everything I can to get wed to as high ranking she was going after the prince. Don't forget season one. She's a little brash, a little too, pick me, pick me, pick me. Okay, her mother has taught her all women are your enemies, they're your comp competition. Not your enemy, enemy, but your competition. So that I think prevented her from making connections where she seemed more warm and friendly. So Cressida kind of getting away from that being a little bit more generous with her compassion. I like seeing it. They backed her into a corner. Got it. She was doing whatever she could to get out of it. Understood. And then she kind of went too far and just kept digging herself deeper. All because she didn't want to marry a super, super older than her guy. And I don't blame her for doing everything she can to not do it. Did she go too far? Yes. Yes, she did. Instead of Colin asking for her mercy, I wish he provided another option. Whatever option that was, I don't know, but something. He, and maybe that was the point. He had no clue what she was up against because he's not a woman in this time, in this society. He has privilege, as Cressida said. As Penelope said, you know, Ellie's, you are able to go and travel the world. We cannot. So yeah, I wish it would have been nice. I think it would have been interesting if he offered Cressida another option than doubling down on the blackmail. Going back to Francesca, on her wedding day, when Sterling, Sterling gave her the kiss, she looked like, oh, maybe this isn't what I wanted, didn't she? Wasn't that the look on her face? Like, oh, maybe this isn't what I wanted after all. Which, huh. Am I looking forward to next season? Yes, yes, yeah. I think overall, yes, I am looking forward to next season. Again, I think it's gonna be a little hurdle of how they're going to get Benedict to want to suddenly be in a relationship. He's been pretty loosey-goosey man about town, again, swimming in his privilege, whether he knows it or not. So what I will be interested to see how, how and why he changes to become the person he needs to be to good, be a good partner. I think that makes sense. And if you read romance novels, you know what I mean when I say that. Eloise is going to come home at some point because she said she was. Do, is that the last we're going to see of Anthony and Kate? I think Daphne and Simon are gone forever. How Penelope's able to write Lady Whistledown, if we see that, would be interesting. What else could they throw in? And, and Eloise is going to the Highlands of Scotland during the winter. Fun! Fun. She's going to see moors and moors and more moors. And more moors. What are you all interested in seeing in the next season? Is there something? I'm afraid to ask if there's something specific in the book you want to see because I don't want any spoilers.
But if there's something you don't want to see, I don't know. I'm just, are you excited? Are you not excited? Are you anxious? Did you like, if you read this book, if you liked how they interpreted Romancing Mr. Bridgerton for season three? Because I've been trying to stay away from spoilers and thoughts until I finished it off. So yes, share your thoughts with me. And don't be strangers. Don't be strangers. There's lots more things to watch. I'm not only watching the big and crazy and the stabby stabby and the bloody bloody. I'm watching softer, quieter things too. Like Lucifer. He's soft and quiet. So don't be strangers. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, and so until next time. Take care of yourselves. This is your reminder if you haven't in a bit, if you just binged all of the Bridgerton and then you went and binged, binged all of the reactions, stand up, stretch your body, stay hydrated, get hydrated. I'm gonna have some water to counteract the Prosecco and then you're gonna come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all, and until next time.